This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. If there's anyone listening out in the parking lot, can you give us a honk? Wonderful. Thank you. And thank you to all of you joining us at home on this beautiful Christ the King or Reign of Christ Sunday. A few announcements before we begin our service today. Immediately after worship, we will have the hanging of the greens. So hopefully you're uh, wearing your ugly sweaters to get in the festive mood. And if not, that's okay. Please join us in uh, decorating the church um, because many hands make light work. So uh, we can get this done quickly and beautifully if we get a lot of help from everybody. Uh, the first floor classroom uh, is where all the decorations are and also where uh, our coffee hour and snacks are. So it, nice and convenient for you to decorate and get some snacks. So please, as many of you as can, please stay after and help us to decorate today. Thank you. Also, before you leave, please, if you can, grab a Project Angel Tree tag and sign up for the Salvation Army kettle ringing on December 2nd. Those things are both out in the front entryway. Um, next Sunday, there will be an Advent intergenerational uh, activities downstairs, a lot of fun activities to uh, get us started off for Advent, another opportunity to wear your favorite ugly sweater again, so please uh, join us next week for all those fun activities. Also, I want to thank uh, Isaiah for filling in reading today. Maxine was not feeling well, and so I appreciate him filling in at the last minute. Thank you. Um, also, we will be keeping her in our prayers, but just to let you know that Helen adds it, uh, went to Rome Hospital yesterday morning with some pains in her side, and she has blood clots in her lungs, so please uh, keep her in your prayers. I saw her yesterday afternoon. Um, she's definitely doing better, but uh, in need of your prayers for sure, so please uh, keep her in your prayers. I believe that is all of the announcements I have for this morning, and so I ask that you please uh, prepare your hearts and minds for worship as we listen to our prelude this morning.
Please join me in our call to worship this morning. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before God's presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to the Lord with songs. For you, Lord, are a great God and a great ruler above all gods. In your hand are the caverns of the earth. The height of the hills are also yours. The sea is yours, for you made it, and your hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. For the Lord is our God, and we are the people of God's pasture and the sheep of God's hand. Our gathering hymn this morning is number 430. Come, sing, O church, in joy. says the Lord our God, I myself will search for my sheep 
and will seek them out. As a shepherd seeks out the scattered sheep, so I will seek out my people. Trusting that God is indeed seeking us, let us confess our sin together. Shepherding God, you have called us, but we have not answered. You have sought us out, but we have continued to wander. You have tenderly gathered us together and cared for us, but we have not extended that same care and mercy to others. Forgive us, remind us, teach us, set us free from sin that, that we might turn toward your love and justice for the whole world. Guide us so that, tentative step after tentative step, we may walk your way. We now take a few moments of silence for private individual confession. Amen. Thus says the Lord our God, I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I will make them lie down. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak. The relentless grace of Jesus Christ always finds and forgives us. Thanks be to our ever-seeking God. Let us pray. Beloved God, we pray this morning that we may experience that peace that passes all understanding, that we may experience you, the living peace of our world. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. Set free by God's grace, let us share God's peace with one another. Please be seated. As we prepare to hear God's word, let us pray for illumination. Almighty God, as we hear your word read and proclaimed today, open our eyes, our hearts, and our hands to honor Christ now as the Lord and King by welcoming him in all people. Amen. Because the kings of ancient Israel proved to be bad shepherds, the prophet Ezekiel declares that the Lord will assume the role of shepherd for them. The Lord will also set over them a shepherd Messiah, my servant David, who will feed and care for the people. God is the shepherd who seeks the lost, weak, and injured, and feeds them with justice. We now read Ezekiel chapter 34, verses 11 through 16 and 20 through 24. For thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among their scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all places to which they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land and I will feed them on the mountains of Israel by the watercourses and in all the inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture. There they shall lie down in good grazing land and they shall feed rich on the rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed. I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak, but the fat and the strong I will destroy. 
I will feed them with justice. Therefore, thus says the Lord God to them, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep. Because you pushed with flank and shoulder and butted at all the weak animals with your horns until you scattered them far and wide, I will save my flock, and they shall no longer be ravaged, and I will judge them between sheep and sheep. I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd. And I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David shall be prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. The word of the Lord. So we're going to ask you to join the choir this Okay. <laughs> so we're going to ask you to join the choir this morning. Um, on the last verse of this hymn, which I'm sure you're very familiar with, we're going to ask you to join us. And it's the fourth verse. That was my mistake. I said the third verse, but I was wrong. The fourth verse. So please, there's an insert in your bulletin. Please sing with us on the fourth verse. Thank you.
On this final Sunday of the church year, our gospel is Jesus' great story of judgment. In the end, the faithful are those who serve Christ by ministering to those who are poor, hungry, naked, sick, or estranged. We read from Matthew chapter 25, verses 31 through 46. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels are with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats, and he will put the sheep at his right hand, and the goats at his left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you, you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you by the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, You that are accused, depart from me into the eternal fire, prepare for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick in prison and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. The word of the Lord. I have a message for any children who want to come forward this morning. Good morning. Come on a little bit closer. Come on. Good morning. How are all of you? Good? Today we are talking about Christ, our King. What is a king? We, right, a ruler, right? Now we don't have a king in our country. Now, and now why, when you say ruler, are, are you talking about this kind of ruler? No, okay, well, I got that wrong. What kind of ruler are you talking about? That rules the land. Oh, that rules the land, so they kind of have to make decisions, right? Yeah. What's that? A leader, okay, so a leader. And we have presidents, right, kings, so those are all leaders, right? Well, we have a picture in a, of a, what is this? A crown, and a lot of times kings wear crowns, right? Do you know where this picture is? Where we got this picture from? On the cover of our bulletin? It's actually here in the church somewhere. Why don't you look around? No, not that one. Yes, you're right. All the way over in the back, up in the choir loft at the very top, that is the crown that we have on our bulletin cover. Very good. 
And that reminds us that Christ is our king. Now, what kind of things do you think a king does and wants us to do? What do you think? Like a leader. What kind of things does a leader want us to do? Wants us to do whatever he says. That's very good, right? Follow the order of God. Okay, follow the order of God. That's a good one. Now, if we're talking about an earthly leader, though you said to do whatever that leader wants us to do, what, what if that leader wants us to do something that maybe isn't very good? Right. If you refuse to do it, you might get in a lot of trouble. So that kind of really puts us in a tough space, doesn't it? Because we want to follow leaders, but if they want us to do things that aren't good, we could kind of get in a lot of trouble. So there's, it's complicated, right? We, we don't know what to do. But Jesus says that he is our king, and we have to follow Jesus. What kind of things do you think Jesus wants us to do? He wants us to do stuff that's very nice, like help people get up and pick up stuff. Right. Help people, open doors for them. What else? Right. Pick up trash and not hurt the planet. I love that because God made the planet. And when we hurt the planet, that's not a good thing. It's kind of disrespecting God, right? Saying we don't care that you made all this wonderful stuff. What else does God want us to do? Right. To read the Bible. Because what do we do when we read and study the Bible? Right, we know that God is real, and we get smarter about who God is. The Bible tells us, these are all wonderful answers. Jesus gives us some more examples. He says, when we follow him, we have to, whatever we do to other people, we actually do to him. That seems kind of odd, doesn't it? But he says, whenever you give somebody a drink of water, or whenever you feed them, or give them clothes, or do wonderful, kind things to them, we are doing that to God. He also says, whenever we do hurtful things to others, we're actually hurting God, like you said about the planet, too. So we need to keep that in mind today, right? Whatever we do to each other, we're actually doing that to God, right? And so we have to be careful and really think about what we are doing, right? God represents everything um, that you have done and will do. Like, it Right, when you're mean to one of your friends, you're being mean to God. So we need to remember when we're doing things, it's hard, I know, but we need to try and, and do our best to care for people. And what that requires is a lot of wisdom, right? You have to think about it. And I have these little owl stickers for you, because usually when you think of an owl, you think of being wise, right? Owls are thought to be wise, right? And so I am going. I know, why is that? Why is an owl wise, you think? Well, an owl probably has to think about, and, and they have to look very carefully, don't they, with their big eyes, so they can see when they're looking for food. They have huge eyes, right? And so they're always looking, right, and, and being on the watch for things that they can eat and, and different things like that. So we can have big eyes like the owl too, right, and be looking, looking for God in each other. I love that. All right, so I'm going to give everybody a sticker. So come over here and get your owl sticker and be like the owl, be wise, and be looking out for ways that you can see God in each other. All right, come on, get your owl sticker. You got to get an owl sticker for everybody here. They're all different colors. All right, here we are, one for you. Come on, a little bit closer. I don't want to fall off these steps. <laughs> that wouldn't be too wise. All right, here, one for you. 
yes, it would give you all a chance to be nice and help me up, but I'm not going to give you that opportunity today. <laughs> but let's all say a prayer together, okay? Good and gracious God, you are indeed our king, the ruler of our life. Help us to see you in each other, to treat each other with the love and kindness that you deserve. For in treating others with love, we treat you with love as well. Amen. Thank you so much. Let us pray. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Power. It's what so many people are after, especially if you want to get ahead. Leaders of all kinds want power. And the more you get, the more you usually want. Leaders of nations have always sought out power in an attempt to show who is more powerful. Wars have been fought and continue to be fought in order to establish who is the most powerful. Great leaders and rulers have been synonymous with power, and more often than not, the quest for this power can lead to destruction. Today, this last Sunday of the church year, we celebrate what is known as Christ the King or Reign of Christ Sunday. After World War I and prior to World War II, the church established this Christ the King Sunday as a way to counter the rising wave of nationalism. It was meant to remind Christians that our ultimate allegiance is not to leaders who promise to be the answer or savior to a country's problems, but rather our allegiance is to Christ, who is the ultimate king or leader or ruler of our lives. That is, after all, what we promised when we were baptized and reaffirmed at our confirmations. We promised to follow the one who would never lead us astray. How quickly led astray, however, we can all become. Power can have a hypnotic effect. It can lure someone into very quickly as it feeds our ego. To be in a position of power means that people respect you, look up to you, follow you, sometimes blindly. How often in history have individuals and entire countries followed charismatic leaders only to find later that those very leaders didn't have their best interests at heart, but only their own? Even in biblical times, people wanted a leader with power. In 1 Samuel, the people pleaded to Samuel, who was getting old, that they wanted a king, a leader, to rule over them like all the other nations. God finally relented and gave them what they wanted, a king like all the other nations. But eventually they were sorry for what they had asked for, because the kings, like the other nations, led them into darkness and exile and despair. Many human leaders in their quest for love of power promise a lot, only to disappoint and lead people into darkness, not light. And that's why God spoke through the prophet Ezekiel and expressed disappointment with the various leaders. God said, I, I myself will be their God. I will bring them into their own land. I will feed them. I will seek the lost. I will bring back the strayed. I will bind up the injured. I will strengthen the weak. I will feed them with justice. I will save my flock. I myself will judge between the sheep. I will be their shepherd. 
God was fed up with the unjust leaders, and God promised to do something about it. And unlike humanity, God's promises are trustworthy, and God keeps God's promises. God did shepherd the people, and God sent another shepherd in Jesus who fed the people with justice. Jesus healed the sick physically, mentally, spiritually. He freed people from the injustices that held them back. He preached and taught the disciples all about God's wisdom and truth and modeled for the disciples the kind of leadership that they too were called to. It was a powerful leadership, yet one not based on violence and control, but of nonviolence and peace. Jesus was and is the resurrected king of all kings. He is the leader above all leaders whom we as Christians have professed to follow and emulate. The kind of power that Jesus demands is not the power earthly leaders demand. Christ's power is made known, as St. Paul tells us, in our weakness. Because when we are weak, we are actually strong because we know it's Christ's power in us that enables us to do what we can't do on our own. The kind of power Christ demands is servanthood. Unlike the previous parables in Matthew's gospel, where Jesus explained what is expected in God's kingdom in very harsh and sometimes confusing stories, Jesus spoke very directly as to what is expected today. The kingdom of God is found when we give food to the hungry and drink to the thirsty, welcoming to the stranger, clothing to those in need of clothing, healing, mercy, comfort, love. These are the signs of power found in the kingdom of God. Jesus said, when you do it to the least of these, you do it to me. That is how we serve Christ, our King. And that is how we are judged in God's kingdom, not by how much power we wield to benefit and lift ourselves or some other significant person up, but by how much the acts we do give life to another. Power for God is what is life-giving. God put this power in Jesus when God raised him from the dead. God has put this power in each one of us through the gift of the Holy Spirit given to us at our baptism to be used to raise people up just like God has raised people up through Christ. God said, I will feed my people with justice. That is what power means to God. Justice, love, mercy, compassion, kindness. And when we act, even in the smallest of ways, with kindness and love, then we are displaying real power, divine power. Every time we lift someone up, we are displaying divine power. Every action we do for others, we do to Christ. That is a humbling thought, but it's how Christ will judge us. Real power is selfless. Real power is life-giving. Real power is revealed in resurrection. That is the God whom we serve when we serve others and in doing so confess that Christ is the leader we turn to, the shepherd who guides us, the king who is revealed in each and every person we interact with. Power, not the love of power, but the power of love is what Christ demands of all of us who follow him. As we prepare to enter into a new year in the church, that love, that divine love, 
is a power worth spreading. Amen. Please join me in our reflection hymn this morning, number 407, When a Poor One. Please join me in affirming our faith from the Nicene Creed found in your bulletin. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets, we believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. 
We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. Jesus calls us to reach out and care for our neighbors in need. One way we do that is together as the church, the corporate body of Christ. Let us offer our gifts to God for God's work in our community. Let us pray. Generous God, we bless your name because you have called us and claimed us and sent us into the world to do your will. Receive now this offering, both of our money and our lives. Through these gifts, may the hungry be fed, the thirsty quenched, the naked clothed, and the stranger welcomed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. In response to the abundant grace of God, we take time now to share our joys and our thanks. Happy birthdays go out this week to Paul Berry, Jackie Dunnady, and Jackie Rausch. Happy anniversaries today to Sam and Cynthia Pendergrast in Douglas, Arizona, and to Jim and Bev Couples on Friday. We are blessed to look forward to our Christmas candlelight concert on Sunday, December 10th 
at 4 p.m., so be sure to invite your family and friends. I know that we have a congratulations and exciting news from Marty Talley, so rather than tell you that myself, I'm going to let Marty tell you all about that. Um, I have done several trips with uh, an organization called All Hands and Hearts that do recovery, disaster recovery, uh, recovery work. Um, they're taking limited number of people for Maui um, simply because they don't have any accommodations. Everything is drazzed. It's just gone. Um, but I applied and I was accepted and I will be leaving for three weeks in February. Um, we're going to be staying at a national park um, just a little bit beyond the town that was destroyed. Um, so for the first time in years, I will be sleeping in a tent on a cot um, and uh, doing whatever it is. I know they're not doing rebuild work yet because a lot of that area is still toxic because of so many different things that burned. Um, and hazmat groups are in there still cleaning that up. So I know we will not be doing rebuild work. Um, I'm not sure if we're going to be doing any what we call muck and gut, but basically tear down work, um, or if we're just going to be doing um, distribution of necessities for the folks who live there. But whatever it is, I don't care. I'm going and I'm going to serve. And as a bonus, uh, the, the, the uh, park that we're camping in, it just happens to be edged on one side by the ocean. So it's going to be a real trial for me, I'm sure. Well, congratulations again. And I know that you will do great work there, as you always do. And uh, I know you'll be sorry to be missing all that snow in February. But you know, try and keep a stiff upper lip about it. <laughs> all right, somebody else. All right, great. Well, first reading today talked about shepherds, and my shepherd from the deacons used to be George Vickers, and George's name comes up on our prayer list. So I called him this week. I had a nice chat with him. He's dealing with a health issue, but very positive and seems to be doing well. Thank you very much. We will continue our prayers with George. I spoke to him right before his second surgery, and he was in good spirit. So glad to hear. Glad to hear he's doing well. Anybody else have a joy or a thanks? All right, over here. I have a joy to have my son, Anthony, and his three children with me today, Mimi, Jane, and Libby. And where are they from? Casanova. Where? Casanova. Casanova, wonderful. Well, welcome. Glad you're here. Anybody else a joy that they would like to share, something they're thankful for? All right, we see a hand up there. Go ahead, Jay. Actually, lady, ladies first, so I'm going to give it to Fenna. Um, I'm thankful for that um, this weekend we got to decorate our house with Christmas decorations, and our house... We moved, so our house roof was too, the tree that we had at our old house was too long, big, so we were, um, so we had to go to a lot of different shops to find the right Christmas tree, and I'm grateful that we found a perfect one. Oh, it looks like we got another hand up there. I am grateful for church and the opportunity that we have to, ins to experience all the wonderful things that God can do for us. Wonderful. Thank you so much. And finally, uh, from the upper deck, <laughs> I, I have three uh, thanks to have for the Thanksgiving week that we had. My taste buds returned to me maybe in the middle of the week, Tuesday, in preparation for Thanksgiving. So the Lord had tested my patience, and I just barely survived. So thank you. Uh, the other joy we have is our son Ryan was here with us this week for Thanksgiving. And the good news is, of course, he'll be graduating in December from Clarkson. But the good news is, is he will also be staying with us because he will be employed at an employer in Rome 
he f got a job offer. So that was wonderful. Very nice. And lastly, our daughter Megan will be going, was chosen to go on a trip to Australia for her job with the uh, research lab. So she'll be gone for a week with that. And so we're pretty happy about all that. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you for sharing that great news. I'm glad those taste buds came back. It's a wonder of turkey, right? All right. <laughs> Anybody else over there? Something you are grateful for, a joy that you want to share? Okay, I see a hand up here. I think I have to echo Jason's comments, just the joy of God and church. And as Isaiah read this morning, we pray this morning that we may experience that peace that passes all understanding. It really hit me and struck me. After 50 years of life and being in this church and reading the words, over and over, I feel grateful to finally understand what that peace that God brings to us. And so I, I hope that all the children really take those words and don't take 50 years like I did. <laughs> and this Thanksgiving was the best Thanksgiving of my life because I didn't go to work. And when you work in food service and retail most of your life, and then you think, I never really enjoy the moment. I never get to really enjoy Thanksgiving because it's always about what load we're getting out and boxes moving and people buying and all the madness. But to finally just sit down with my family on Thanksgiving, not have turkey, but just crack open a bottle of wine at 2 o'clock in the afternoon and just start drinking and enjoy that very much. So that made it a great Thanksgiving. But last night we were able to bring all of our family together on a Saturday evening um, and just, again, enjoy each other, enjoy some a meal together. And uh, I'm just grateful for all my family, my church family, my church, and mostly my God to finally help me understand what that peace means. So very thankful this morning. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for sharing that. I thought a lot about uh, the workers on this Thanksgiving and uh, all the stores and the places that people having to work and they couldn't be home with their families. And so uh, it's wonderful that you were able to. And it's important to remember those who couldn't be. Um, and that peace that you talked about it really is an amazing thing, and we can feel that peace, even in the midst of the struggles in our life, that God is with us. Um, as we heard in the song this morning, God is walking that road with us all the time, and so for that, we can be grateful. And now we're going to turn our attention to praying for those in our community, in our church, and around the world who are in need of prayer. Let us pray. Holy God, from Christ our King, we receive our call to feed, clothe, and welcome. Direct your church to respond to this call with faithfulness and generous love. We pray for the work of the Presbyterian Disaster Assistance, the Presbyterian Mission Agency, and partnerships with Global Feeding Ministries. In Christ, the rock of our salvation, we are brought into union with all of creation, with mountains, seas, dry lands, and animals of the field. We seek your guidance to protect and be good stewards of all that you have made. In Christ, O oh God, we know merciful judgment. Guide rulers of every nation in ways of humble leadership and wise decision-making. Allow aid to come to all who are underserved and care to any who are neglected. Turn us from being quick to respond with violence and war to communicate a way of peace. We pray especially for the war-torn countries of Palestine, Israel, Ukraine, and Russia. In Christ, we feel the depth of your love and care toward us. Nurture and nourish all who hunger. Connect any who are isolated 
and surround all who experience rejection or abuse. We pray for those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, especially George Vickers, Helen Adzit, Sue Hansen, Arlene Pfeiffer, John Nethaway, Skip Briggs, Jim Clough, Joanne, relative of Kathy Austin, Maxine Strong and her son and daughter, Sheila, daughter-in-law to Barbara and Ron Rhodes, Marilyn Baumler, friend of Barbara's, Marcy Ferens, Ralph Pizzula, Reverend Jim Harriff, Connie McConnell, Shirley Fox, Paul Berry, Larry Beasley, Ray Tucker, Dorothy Hausman, and Roberta Burt. We lift up in prayer Chris Hayden, Carol Lee, Brittany Cataldo, Carrie Scacia's friend Marie, Carol Berger, Willie Talmadge, Vi Head, Brian Burke, Bill Nee, Dawn Cooney, Barbara Crum, Patty Dunham, John, Aurelio and Marcia Cacabilios, the grandchildren of Kirk and Linda Hinman, Joyce, cousin to Keith Butters, Dan Zimmerman, all of our members in nursing and residential care facilities, and all those serving in the military. In Christ, we are made the people of his pasture, workers in his kingdom. Inspire the outreach and social ministry ministries of this congregation. We pray for all people who serve and attend to the needs of others. Holy God, in Christ, we are welcomed home. We praise you for the faithful witness of those who have served you and extend your welcome and love to us. Unite us with them as one body of Christ. And now gather together as one by your Holy Spirit, we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our sending hymn this morning is number 151, Crown Him with Many Crowns.
May the love of God sustain our souls, the grace of Christ enfold our hearts, and the holy stirrings of the Spirit disrupt our lives and bring us home to Christ's sovereign, joyful kingdom. Amen. And now let us go forth from this place and seek the face of Christ. Seek Christ's face in every person we meet, the least, the greatest, the remarkable, the ordinary. Let us seek Christ's face outside ourselves, outside these walls, outside our daily routines. Seek his face in people who are vulnerable, trusting that when they look into our eyes, they too will see Christ's face looking back and know that God is good all the time.